I've always tried to add things to my life, adding new habits, new rules, I try to like build a, a more simple, meaningful life. But over the past year or so, I have found out that it is the things that I stopped doing that have actually improved my life the most. So today I wanted to share with you 15 things that I've quit doing that have actually improved my life. Reading instead of doing. I have read an insane amount of books. I've listened to literally thousands of podcasts and YouTube videos. And I'm always trying to like, you know, find more things that will improve my life. But recently uh, I have kind of stopped taking in so much information because I realized that I was just reading and I wasn't really putting what I was reading or watching or listening to into action. So that's something that I've stopped doing that's literally uh, been saving me some time every single day and just focusing more on doing, on living, on experiencing instead of constantly learning. I think learning was a great thing for me, but after, you know, a couple hundred books, I, I know most of what they're going to say already, and I need to actually put what they're saying into action. And one of those things that I learned from Essentialism and the 4-Hour Workweek was to stop saying yes to so many things. Like recently, I've been going to physical therapy for my shoulder. It's been messed up for like eight years, but I have this rule that I never agree to anything on the spot. So if anybody asks me for anything, I will never say yes. It doesn't matter what you asked me for, I will never say yes on the spot. So even after the first appointment, when they're looking to book the next one, I was like, you know, uh, I'll get back to you tomorrow with, with some times once I check out my calendar. I might not have needed to do that for physical therapy, but that has been my default for about the past year is just saying no to whatever people ask me and then giving myself at least 24 hours to think about it, decide if it's something that I want to do, if it's something that I need to do. That way I never get pressured into doing anything um, that doesn't align with like what I want to actually be doing just to, to please the person or because it's awkward. Which leads me into uh, taking phone calls, which I uh, don't really do anymore. I used to always answer the phone because I was worried that, you know, it'd be something important and that I would miss it. Um, and for the past year, I have not really answered uh, my phone except for literally uh, family because I turned on this thing called like personal. So pretty much um, all day and all night, uh, nobody can really call me unless they're on like my approved um, you know, call list. And doing that makes my phone ring, you know, every other day, maybe once or twice a week, like not all that often. If it's important, people know to just text me and that allows me to focus so much more. It stops so many random interruptions, all the spam calls, they're just gone because my phone doesn't ring. Honestly, if you get a bunch of phone calls, this is like uh, life changing. And I guess while we're on the topic of phones, I have zero notifications on here besides text messages um, from approved people, everything else, I do not receive notifications for, no email, no social media, no apps, nothing. And that again, just saves me a, a lot of like mental space of like checking to see if something popped up. No, when I wanna like check messages, I'll go into the messenger app, I'll go into, you know, Instagram or whatever, but I never get notified about anything and it's amazing. And I guess a sidebar in that, like kind of more business related, but I never really take meetings when people ask to meet for something. I always ask if we can do it over, um, you know, email first, and if not email, then over a phone call, and if not over a phone call, then a Zoom call, and if not a Zoom call, then I will meet in person, especially uh, if it's business related, I try to have as few meetings as humanly possible because generally they're just a big waste of time. Only working. This used to be a, a trap that I was really stuck in. It was this idea that I had to work more. I had to fill every moment with being productive, with getting more done, with climbing higher up the ladder, with doing all this stuff. And I realized that I had no friends. I had no hobbies. I, I wasn't really enjoying uh, this, this life that I had kind of built and all this work that I had put in it. Like I wasn't enjoying it at all. I wasn't taking time to breathe. I was getting stressed out. So um, that is something that I am really focusing on not doing is not having my life revolve around work, but having work be something that I enjoy doing and that adds to my life, but it is not my life. It's not my identity is my work. I think that's something that's hard for uh, YouTubers in particular, cause like I have to look at my life to find ideas for my work. So it's really easy to just like always be like in, in this loop of like you know, coming up with ideas and putting stuff out there. But when I was able to find a little bit more separation, um, that has really helped me enjoy the process a lot more and also like make better stuff because I'm actually living my life and looking for experiences in my life instead of um, just treating it too much like a job. By the way, if you are like a, a YouTuber, I do have a seven day free YouTube course. It's wicked good. People have said it's better than like courses they've paid for. So uh, check it out. There's a link down below. Keeping junk food around the house. So I'm currently trying to watch my weight for the next couple of weeks. I'm trying to like cut, but uh, I have no self-control. So if I have food in the house, I will absolutely eat it. 
Um, but for me, I have found that it's actually hard for me to gain weight when I'm eating whole healthy, natural, like whole foods, when I'm eating steak, potato, vegetables, fruits, it's actually kind of hard to overeat when I do that. And for me, snacks is a big one. So instead of having, you know, chips, or cereal, different bars that are actually really high in calories. I have a ton of fruit around now, apples. I even traded like regular chips for these uh, masa ones, which are like real ingredients. It's just like corn, beef tallow, and salt. So they're actually like a lot more filling. Really focusing on creating an environment that is uh, designed for me to achieve my goals so I don't have to practice self-control throughout most of the day. And it's, it's actually helped so, so much. I realized that shopping is one of the worst things that I can do. I used to do it when I was bored. It's so easy to do online now, this like that idea of Amazonnesia, which is like you order something that you absolutely needed and then when it comes around the next day, you forgot what it was and you're like, oh, what did I order? And you open up the box and you're like, what on earth is it? It used to happen to me a lot and since I have stopped like shopping, I'd never go to the store. I very rarely buy things online. I've had a lot more money, a lot less crap in my house that I will eventually have to donate. And I just think that everything I buy needs to, you know, kind of fit in a criteria of it makes my life easier, it makes me money, or it just like makes me happy. And it used to be that most of the things in my house and that I bought didn't fall into that criteria. You know, obviously there's necessities, but something to think about. Having a perfect clean home, especially again, as a YouTuber, this is something that can be hard uh, to, to let go of because I talk about, you know, clutter-free habits and all this stuff and how to keep your house clean. And my house isn't always clean. I've got a two-year-old that can trash it in no time flat. We've got a two month old now um, that doesn't really do anything, but it prevents us from cleaning up as fast. So um, just being okay with the house kind of getting a little out of hand throughout the day, but then always like resetting at night uh, has just lowered my stress levels a lot. Realizing that it's not gonna look perfect all the time, but as long as I have a place for everything and I'm constantly you know, resetting at least once a day, then it's never gonna get out of hand so much that it's stressful, but I also don't have to you know, uh, let it get to me when it's not perfect constantly because life's not like that at all. Extreme frugal living. So this is something that I used to do where I would spend way too much time trying to save money. Like I would spend an extra half an hour of my time to try to save an extra $5 by going to a different store or by looking for cheaper gas. And there is like a place for being frugal. I'm still pretty frugal, um, but I don't take it to the extreme that way where if there is a service or just something that's gonna save me time, I'm okay with paying to buy back my life. I'm okay with spending $10 more or $20 more to buy back an hour of my life. Or if like I have a weakness, I'm okay with paying for help to make that better. For instance, uh, with the sponsor of this video, Grammarly. It turns out that Meredith has been using Grammarly for over a year and she never told me about it. I cannot tell you how upset this made me. I just don't even know what to say. For real though, since I have started using Grammarly like over a month ago, I have used it every single day. I think it has saved me hours worth of work. It is amazing. I will never go back. A lot of what I do every day involves some type of writing, whether it's answering emails, writing scripts, even like building out my course. Grammarly is pretty much a AI writing partner that works where you work. So you can craft quality writing fast across different platforms. I used to use other AIs and you'd have to like copy and paste over stuff. And this is like all very easy to use. I started out using the free version. I was using it so much and loving it that I just upgraded to the premium and it saved me so much time, guys. A cool feature of Grammarly Premium is that it ensures that your tone isn't too friendly and it's not too formal. I can link like Google Drive files directly through here. I can also just have it change the tone of whatever I'm writing, which has been like game changing for me whether it's being you know, more confident or more casual. One of the big things for me is like my, my spelling sucks, so it's made me way more professional and like easy to understand what I'm trying to say. If you wanna level up your productivity, check them out with the link down below. You can upgrade to premium, it's amazing. And Meredith loves it too, so if that's not an endorsement, I don't know what is. Check them out. Newsletters, emails, text messages. I have a problem with signing up for stuff that is free and then never looking at it after the first one. I'll do this to get a discount at like an online store. I'll give them my, my number and then I'm getting texts for months. So I regularly go through and unsubscribe for those if I, if I actually do it. Or like email newsletters, sometimes I'll sign up for them and then if they're just not giving me the value or I was like lost interest in them, I will unsubscribe from those things. Like I have one myself that I send out, but I try to do it like once every other week or once a month because I wanna make sure that I'm never being that for other people because I've signed up for some and they're like daily and then I either spend way too much time reading them or I just lose interest but then I keep seeing that email even after I stopped reading it like every single day. So if you're signed up to too many, don't. Setting goals instead of systems. So this is the common trap of like, 
I'm trying to hit, you know, a million subscribers. I'm trying to save up and buy this house, get this promotion, do whatever your goal is, uh, even get in shape. And it turns out the answer to that is not setting goals, but instead setting systems. Then I stop feeling like I'm failing at my goals and instead break it down to like, I'm not trying to get in shape, which is this like uh, elusive goal that you can't really quantify, but instead, I am being somebody who works out, I'm working out three times a week. That is my system, whatever happens, happens. But if I eat good and I work out consistently, I'm gonna get in shape. But if I just focus on the small things, the big things kind of take care of themselves. I think that's similar to the destination versus the journey. I used to always focus on the destination of something, reaching a certain amount of subscribers or whatever. And because of that, I was always feeling like once I get there, then I'll be happy. But something that I realized recently when I hit half a million subscribers is like the next day after having this goal for three, four years, whatever it was, I felt zero different. And you know what? Uh, that actually was a good thing because now I'm really a lot more focused on trying to enjoy the journey. Instead of looking at things as a struggle, like maybe when my kids are acting up or when work is hard, whatever it is, I'm trying to enjoy the process, be present for the process and, and let it better me. So less destination, more journey. Trying to be happy. There's this quote that really changed a lot for me uh, from the four hour work week. Excitement is a more practical synonym for happiness. It's precisely what you should strive to chase. It's a cure all. Now, I don't think excitement is a cure all if you're always chasing a high, um, you know, th that's not necessarily gonna work. But as I've been hanging out with more successful people that you think like, oh, they are a millionaire or they just sold this huge company or whatever it was, they didn't really feel uh, you know, happier after that. And a lot of times happiness comes down to choosing to in enjoy what you're doing now. Don't try to be happy. Assuming that I am right. When you assume that you are right, even about stuff you're pretty sure you're right about, um, it's just generally a, a, a recipe for bad things to happen. So this is something that I love to do is like give my opinion on something. So like if I'm having a conversation with somebody, they'll be like, hey, this is what I think, but you know what? I'm wrong all the time. What do you think? And having that type of mindset, like saying that, will allow you to be able to have a rational conversation with somebody who might have different beliefs than you. And if you come into it with an open mind that like, I've been wrong about a lot of stuff in my life. My, my opinions have changed about a lot of stuff. So you know what, maybe I'm wrong. And pretty much everybody has something that I can learn from them in. And if you go in with that mindset, as opposed to like, I'm right, I know I'm right. Then it's just like, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot less enjoyable to do that for me. Keeping clothes that I do not wear. Yeah, so I used to wear a lot more colors like last year and for about the past six months I have not worn anything um, but black clothes for the most part and uh, that's what I like to do. So I was hanging on to these other colored, you know, shirts and pants that it's like, you know, maybe if I start wearing colors again, I'll hang on to those. But uh, this is what works for me. It's not for most people probably. I literally wear nothing besides like one or two brands uh, of black shirts and black jeans or black shorts um, and that's just you know, what works for me. And I think a lot of us hang on to stuff because it's like this ideal self will like, oh, I'd love to wear that, but you just like hate it when you actually wear it. So um, that's that's something I've stopped doing. If you enjoyed this video, then check out Grammarly. Uh, I cannot live without them since I've discovered them and I'm still mad about my wife for not telling me about them. So check them out. There's discounts and things and there's another video here that you might enjoy. Goodbye.